I think it's important that YouTube answers for and gives a reason to why they allow this content on their site despite it breaking TOS. It's the money, Lebowski. That's literally it. It's literally just the money. Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, their channels get a lot of views and they make YouTube a lot of money. Jesse Gender's videos also get a lot of views, but she doesn't make them nearly as much money because she doesn't upload at the same frequency because her content is uh, apparently <laughs> more likely to get strike in stupid ways, but it's the money. That's why YouTube and any, uh, any firm really is going to be willing to sell minority down the river if it means they can make more money. Much the same way that they're willing to pander to minorities by making their profile icons rainbows for the month of June to make more money by seeming more woke even though they actually aren't in practice, right? That's it. Very simple. So censorious YouTube has gone too far yet again. We've seen it happen many times. YouTube, other social media companies seem to have a bit of an issue with censorship. It's very 1984 Animal Crackers New Leaf. And frankly, I'm getting sick of it. And you might be thinking, Kanye, aren't you supposed to be a leftist? Uh, I thought that censorship only happened to conservatives. Uh, because that's what the absolutely deranged, not living in reality conservatives always say. Well, it might come as a shock to you. Uh, but leftists and left-wing people have been getting censored on social media platforms, you would imagine, since social media platforms existed. And it seems to have gotten kind of bad recently. So we've got a couple stories here, and it is very annoying. And one of them happened to me, oh my god. But not to such a degree as the first one we're going over. Uh, this tweet was posted on October 19, 2022 by Mr. Vouch. It says, this morning I woke up to two fraudulent YouTube channel strikes, one to my main channel and one to my second. I won't be able to stream or post videos to my main channel for a week. It's extremely clear these strikes are the product of fraudulent brigading, as I'll explain. So for anyone who doesn't know, community guideline strikes is a three strikes you're out system. Meaning that if you have two of them, well, one more, your channel does like indefinitely get suspended. So you essentially have to be walking on eggshells for six whole months. And even if you slip up or if it's another fraudulent third strike, your channel just gets yoinked and it's a wrap. Which is not really good if, one, you're the content creator who makes a living on YouTube. Two, to a lesser extent, YouTube's end because they're losing a potential revenue stream to fraudulent activity, as Vosh is alleging here. Three, it's seemingly completely contradictory because, unsurprisingly, there are an abundance of conservative, reactionary YouTube channels that say and do much worse things that end up having actual negative real-world impact to the point of people losing their livelihood and lives, and they're still up. And as far as we could tell, fully monetized. Kind of interesting how that works. Then we got one of three community guidelines strikes. Your content was removed due to a violation of our community guidelines. You won't be able to do things like upload posts or live stream for one week. Your content was removed due to a violation of community guidelines because it's your first time your account isn't affected. You're only warned once and this warning will remain on your channel. But a second one came through. Both strikes occurred at the same time on months old content in the middle of the night. Both were for quote unquote violent or graphic content, which is interesting because how is a Matt Walsh video still allowed on the platform? This man literally uses violent rhetoric to describe trans people and also literally just does stochastic terrorism. For those of you who don't know, just talks about people and talks about certain institutions like Boston Children's Hospital that leads to them getting death threats, bomb threats, having to beef up security, having police calls and their services shut down for goddamn 40 some minutes a children's hospital somehow those channels are allowed to stay up and we assume fully monetized some may say it might be because they make youtube a lot of money at least more than uh Walsh's channel it would seem both of these factors suggest coordinated report brigading but what was the content that's very interesting we need to know the context of the situation to really understand the uh, inner workings of the youtube machine the main channel strike was on a four hour stream vod so it's really difficult to know what was being implicated there if quote we're at risk of great political turmoil and you need to be ready to defend yourself is youtube tos say goodbye to all gun and right-wing youtube and that's very true uh, it's funny that the right will always say, oh my god, but if you're pro-censorship of, like, people saying the n-word and also threatening to kill minorities on the timeline, that those people should get banned, well then you're gonna have to be subject to that too. And it's like, okay, I don't really do that. Uh, I understand that these are private corporations that have a terms of service, and if you violate it, you get in trouble. But that's not what we're talking about here. 
We're not talking about violations of terms of service. We're talking about very nebulous decisions made that in our view, and of course, you know, everybody's going to say it's not, you know, a good decision, blah, blah, blah. But it seems like given the context, we have a better argument. Usually when a conservative video gets yoinked, it's because they're literally like using violent rhetoric about a minority or something, right? Whereas on the left, you're talking about, oh yeah, like billionaires shouldn't exist or whatever. Uh, or you're making uncouth comments about some of the most powerful people the face of the earth has ever seen, which is, you know, you're completely not able to do any of that. A lot of the things that left-wing creators get clapped for on YouTube don't seem to be actually justified and are often the result of large groups of right-wingers mass-reporting content in order to flag it and get it taken down because they don't like what left-wing people are saying. Because usually those left-wing people are debunking the stupid shit that they say, right? Uh, and they don't like that because it makes their feelings hurt. So they brigade it and try to censor you. But like, we've already known that. We've always known that the things that are used against the right when it comes to censorship would be used against the left because they always have been. Like leftists have been like literally killed by governments before, right? That's like one of the most severe forms of censorship you can think of. And obviously left-wing accounts have always been subject to these same TOS. The thing is, is that not all censorship is made equal. And I think that in the case of Vosges, and we'll be getting into Jesse Genders as well, in the case of mine, I think we have a better argument for why this is a bad decision that should be reversed. Whereas a lot of the time when it's a right winger, not so much. There have been some times where I didn't think that a right winger would get in trouble for a certain thing and didn't necessarily agree with it. Uh, but those times are few and far between. To continue, but the Vosh pitch strike was on a 105 second video in which I watched GOP candidate Eric Greitens ridiculous rhino hunting ad. I laughed at it, compared it to not the party infighting, and my video ends. My video contained nothing even remotely interpretable as violent or graphic content. If that's violent or graphic content, every single politics and news channel will be gone by now. And that's actually kind of what's happened or been happening ever since the so-called adpocalypse a long time ago. There was a, a certain like brand or corporation that saw that ads were playing on I think right-wing content that was like really disgusting and they really freaked out and all advertisers started pulling their uh, advertising from YouTube specifically like the news and politics side of YouTube and that obviously wreaked havoc on you know political creators on all sides of the aisle and eventually YouTube onboarded a bunch of major media Media corporations and now that's all you get recommended when you look into news and politics stuff uh, because they talk about the same things but they're safer because they're big multinational corporations with a lot of money uh, and they're allowed to be fully monetized while talking about literally the same thing I'm talking about but worse right and specifically this would also implicate almost every single far-right YouTube channel but for some reason those channels are unaffected and you know these baby back bitches like Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, The Quartering, Tim Pool, any of these motherfuckers, if they got a community guideline strike, if they so much as got a mean word from YouTube in an email about a warning about not doing a certain thing, they would absolutely raise hell on the timeline for it because their entire brand is, oh my God, my views are so dangerous. They're so controversial when they're really just stupid. So like, you know, these motherfuckers wouldn't be keeping that shit under wraps. So obviously they seem to be doing fine. Goes on to say, at Team YouTube, please review my appeals and remove these strikes. They are as artificial and fraudulent as you can get. Uh, Team YouTube comes in jerking themselves off. Appreciate the context. We'll take a look at this and let you know what we find. And not much has come from it, it would seem so far. Has there been an update? Wait, I didn't check. <clears throat> has he, has Vouch published an update, update yet on it? God damn it. I don't think so, no. Okay. <clears throat> So if you want a quick example of uh, what I mean by how our right-wing channels allowed to stay up given the standards that certain left-wing channels are held to by YouTube, uh, while I was looking for an update from Mr. Vouch, Alejandra Caraballo, who I am a big fan of, she says, Matt Walsh compared drag wings to cancer and said police should be, quote, breaking down the doors, carting away the adults in handcuffs, and goes on, and charging them all as pedophiles. Walsh wants to lock up LGBTQ people in prison for simply being at a drag show. So let's, let's listen to this rhetoric that is somehow fully monetizable from Matt Walsh. So I was not previously familiar with the term drag mom, though from context it seems that this is just another way of describing a professional groomer. Source, context, there isn't any. There are drag queen performances that are explicit, and those are for adults only, 
and there are drag performances that are not, and those are usually all ages. People like Matt Walsh don't like either. The <laughs> entire point is to just equate all queer people with pedophiles, uh, because pedophiles are rightfully, you know, met with harsh condemnation from almost literally anybody, uh, except right-wingers are, like, very excited to call everybody that, and the reason for that is because they know that those people will get that harsh condemnation, and they also want people that watch them to be like, huh, well, what do people usually recommend for people who have been convicted of pedophilia? Hmm, I wonder. It might be the death penalty. That's usually the first thing people think of. Like, how could you possibly do this to a child? You should not be allowed to continue to live. It's essentially a roundabout way of advocating for violence against people using fallacious accusations that you have no proof for. Literally just your feelings. This is the kind of rhetoric that the right wing is trafficking in a lot recently. Matt Walsh is one of the worst examples because he's kind of the unfiltered Ben Shapiro. It seems to be essentially a sort of pedophilic predatory farm system that the groomers have set up. And meanwhile, Matt Walsh has recently been implicated in unearthed audio that he had where he says that young girls below the age of 18, it's okay if an adult, Matt Walsh, thinks impregnates them as long as they get married, right? That's the caveat. That's the context he adds because he's a disgusting fucking freak who <laughs> should not be allowed around children. What can be done about this? That's really the question. We've established that- oh, I just realized I didn't actually go over that. Wait, let me- I gotta bring that up. I didn't actually talk about that in a video. So let's hear it in his own words. Um, I'm not clear if this was on his YouTube channel or if this was on another pro- It might have been on the radio station. Uh, but Media Matters unearthed this footage. So, so, you know, let's get it- give it a listen straight from the horse's mouth. Ever since the beginning of time, Teenage girls have been getting pregnant. It, it used to be more common. The the peak. And, ever since and that's a problem for Matt Walsh, by the way. He's upset by the fact that it's not. They started keeping records of these things, which they only started doing recently, like in the 20th century. Uh, but ever since they started keeping records, in 1957 was the peak for teenage pregnancy. 1957. Not 2009. Well, back not then, today. All of them were supposed to have kids. Like, that's well, when you hold had on. kids. That's my point. Okay. Um, so to all of a sudden act like this phenomenon of girls getting pregnant at that at a, at a young age that we consider young, 16 or 17. Baby act, he says that we consider young, that we consider young, meaning it, like, is it up for debate if that's young or not? Matt Walsh seems to think so. Uh, even biologically, and, and this is me just stating, I'm, I'm just right now I'm going to start by just stating facts. So fact number one, it's not a new phenomenon. Fact number two, in fact, it's a phenomenon that was more common earlier in history and for, you know, the first six to ten thousand years of human existence it was a normal thing so apparently does that make it okay i don't think so yeah maybe back when people were literally dying at the age of 32 and not 80 you had to have children younger in order to survive as a species we don't currently live in a set of circumstances anymore matt people are living on average to around the 80s right god willing it's a bit of a different circumstance and set of uh, qualities to have to worry about here when it comes to the survival of the human species. Uh, it doesn't seem like you really need to be advocating for the impregnation of 16-year-old girls, given that, right? Like, maybe back in caveman days, when motherfuckers was living until, like, 20 years old. Not anymore. It's really fucking weird, man. Uh, fact three. Girls between the ages of, like, 17 and 24 is when they're technically most fertile. Yeah. Okay? That's biological. That's a fact, all right? I'm just stating facts. That's all I'm doing. Stating facts in the context of a conversation where you are trying to justify and advocate for the impregnation of 16 year old girls in 20 or whenever this was hosted, considered in modern day, right? But what happened recently, and this is the, the fourth fact, recently in the last 30 years or so, we decided that that's way too young to start a family. Uh huh. Why? And uh, because I, I would say that 16 is certainly too young to start a family, sure. Was. Now the divorce we, rates would probably go up, and once you're that young, you can't really make sure that well, you know. No, that's girls the are getting, no, 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 no. Because girls were getting married early, and marriages were lasting longer. You very rarely hear about like these these relationships that go to there. So here's a question: How common was divorce, uh, and also how common was women being allowed to divorce? How common was it that women actually had the position in society to be able to open up their own bank account? 
in order to mortgage a home. It's almost like there was a certain movement for the rights of women that fought for their ability to live on their own, not dependent on a man or something. I, it's that's a dying breed of people out yeah, there. Yeah, and those all were all people that got married very young. That's why. That's why they're that's, still alive. Yeah, that's why you can have someone in their seventies who's celebrating their you know fifty uh, fifth wedding anniversary because they got married when they were teenagers. So what I'm saying is that the problem is not per se teenage pregnancy. It's unwed pregnancy. And uh, somehow the left are the groomers. The left are the dangers to children and the youth. Somehow the left are the abusers of children. When literally the biggest, most vocal mouthpiece for, you know, the all oh, everybody, all queer people, the groomers ideology and rhetoric is literally advocating for the impregnation of 16-year-old girls. Matt Walsh is literally insane. The problem in society. It's only problematic when, when, when you are not married and you don't have the man there to help you take care of the kids because he's a coward. And the reason why we have that now are for two reasons. Because we have, we have in, in current society, we, have ex we live in the age of extended adolescence. You'd think Matt Walsh should be excited about an extended adolescence. Girl and Chester, also, if you look up historical records, even in medieval times, girls getting married under the age of 18 to 20 was pretty rare except for state marriages, which was less about fertility and was more about avoiding war. Still cringe as fuck. But at least back in the day, there was some context besides, quote, what Matt Walsh has said for fuck. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I just realized I hadn't actually brought that up. So I guess here we are. Uh, now that, to be clear, this I don't believe is on Matt Walsh's current platform, his YouTube channel. I think that was on some radio show or something. So that's not within the same conversation. Uh, but he did on his YouTube channel go on to double down on that and said he apologized for nothing. So he seems to still think that and promote it to his millions of followers uh, with seemingly not a word from YouTube. But let's continue with this. This is happening and it's only getting worse over time. Progressivism does what the name suggests, what the label suggests. It's progressivism, so it progresses, except that it progresses in the same sense that, say, cancer progresses. Wow. It keeps spreading and getting worse and eating away at our civilization until it you is- You know, progressivism, which has brought us uh, black people being allowed to vote, women being allowed to open their own bank accounts and not have to be the dependent of a man in order to live, progressivism, which has brought the 40-hour work week, a minimum wage. You know, progressivism, it just makes everything worse. To Matt Walsh. And just like cancer, stopping it is not a gentle or a painless process. The farther along the cancer is, the more aggressive you have to be in fighting it. Culturally, we are approaching, if we haven't already reached, a terminal state, which means we have to be all the more aggressive, which calls for two things. First, by the way, he's saying culturally we've reached a terminal state, meaning that so for him, like acceptance of queer people has gone too far. Acceptance of black and brown people has gone too far. You would imagine acceptance of Jewish people has gone too far. You know, things like that. Progressivism. Right. But the thing is, is that queer people have always existed. They literally have always existed, except for now people like Matt Walsh are less effective in stripping the rights away of those queer people. The fight for queer rights that has been bloody and taken a while, and we're not even fully there yet, has made it so that what he's trying to do is harder, which is to keep queer people in the closet, make them fearful for their lives to the point where they stay in the closet, make the parents of children who happen to be some kind of queer abuse them, which Matt Walsh has literally advocated for before. Uh, child abuse, if your child happens to say, oh, I think I might be a boy, but I was born a girl, blah, blah, you know? So that's the terminal state that he's worried about. Involving children in drag events in any capacity should be outright criminalized everywhere. There, there is no other way. You know, this, this doesn't stop until police are breaking down the doors at these places and carting the adults away in handcuffs. So we've still not seen any kind of proof or studies that the presence of children at all ages drag shows that are tailored toward being all ages, meaning that they are not sexually explicit. Not all adult drag shows are sexually explicit, by the way, but to people like Matt Walsh, all drag is inherently sexual. There's been no proof presented by any right winger that the presence of children at all ages drag shows has any kind of a negative effect. We just haven't seen it. Because this is a entirely feelings over facts argument that they have. They think that people who do drag are icky 
and therefore they don't understand it or like it, and therefore they want to ban it. That's it. Don't understand it, ban it. That's it. That's the entire conservative motto. And that's what we're operating under here, except we have the additional rhetoric that is also violent, right? Now, obviously it's inherently violent to ban somebody from cross-dressing or doing drag uh, because the violence of the state is what would be used in order to fulfill those penalties, but I digress. Charge them all as pedophiles. Oh, so says the person who thinks it's okay to impregnate 16 year old girls, sure thing, man. Throw them in prison and, and whenever they get out, if they do get out, put them on the sex offender registry for life. That man in the first clip dance. So what's super interesting about that, and yeah, Fiaro just brought it up. Uh, the majority of states that have the highest rates of child marriage and still allow for child marriage happen to be red states, happen to be solidly Republican states. Those are states that Matt Walsh is a fan of, you would imagine, right? Considering his uh, seeming desire to impregnate 16-year-old girls, as long as he can marry them. Should be treated legally as a child predator. That, that's the level of protection that our children are owed and the people sexualizing and exploiting them are owed that level of punishment. But nobody is sexualizing or exploiting them. A trans person existing around a child is not inherently a sexual thing. It's simply not. A drag queen being in the presence of a child is not inherently a sexual thing. The people who are turning that into a sexual thing are sexualizing the children in that instance are people like Matt Walsh who will see a drag queen and then see a child and then concoct like he's doing right now a sexual scenario involving them. He is the one doing the sexualization of children. Point blank period, that's it. Clearly. But this is a lot on YouTube. You can't debunk right-wing rhetoric like this because you're liable to get age-restricted like Jesse Gender, which we'll get into in a moment. But you can call all queer people and their allies pedophiles and advocate for harsh penalties against them in a variety of ways. Uh, and you're fine. Your channel is still up. Let's see. Matt Walsh. Let's see what's going on here. Ah, well, channel still up. 1.82 million subscribers. Certainly more than Walsh or Jesse Gender have. Ah, uh, let's see. Hmm. Ah, I see all these videos still getting views. You'd imagine making money because like I say before, if they weren't making money, if they were subject to moderation, they would not keep it quiet. They would talk about it. So if we haven't heard it, it clearly hasn't happened. He seems to be doing fine on YouTube, but somebody whose literal entire shtick on YouTube is to debunk right-wing rhetoric, violent right-wing rhetoric a lot of the time, is getting fraudulent strikes, and YouTube has got dick to say about it. To move on from uh, Matt Walsh's advocacy for the impregnation of 16-year-old girls, we've got Jesse Gender here, uh, who is a really good YouTuber, has put out videos about Matt Walsh in the past that I highly recommend. Uh, and now has put up another video, a follow-up video, to the original Matt Walsh video that she made. This was on October 14th, 2022. Jesse Jenner wrote, I'm deeply upset right now. My video about Matt Walsh got taken down for quote-unquote sex and nudity when there was none. The only thing that might possibly be considered so was a mannequin, and even then it was used in a quote, educational, documentary, artistic and scientific way as described within the context and bounds of the YouTube community guidelines. Somehow, this video got in trouble. Huh, that's really interesting. So I wonder, the original Jesse Jenner, Matt Walsh video, or at least the, the major one, the anti-trans disinformation pipeline was a really good video. It actually went into a lot of and debunked a lot of Matt Walsh's disgusting, violent rhetoric. You would imagine that the fans of Matt Walsh that may have seen that aren't too happy about that. Right-wingers love weaponizing censorship from big tech platforms whenever they can. They mass report people they don't like for having opinions they don't like whenever they can. You'd imagine that may have been what happened here. Now, I'm just speculating, obviously. There's no way I could know that. I'm just guessing, given the uh, experience I've had watching a lot of this stuff happen, uh, but regardless, the actual strike is ridiculous. Now, I haven't seen the video. It's up on Nebula, so you could see it if you uh, have access to that, uh, but I have not yet seen it. However, I saw the first Matt Walsh video, and there was no such sex and nudity, and I've seen other Jesse Gender videos, and they also had no such sex and nudity, so I find it hard to believe that there actually was any, right? So... On October 16th, Jesse Gender put out a follow-up statement, essentially saying that they're going to wait for the appeals process 
and it seems to be taking longer. The video is in full up on Nebula. If it turns out that YouTube doesn't reverse the decision, Jesse's then going to release an edited version that gets rid of essentially everything that could possibly get in trouble with YouTube from it, uh, which is really unfortunate because I don't expect it to actually have to be removed. This seems to be a stupid decision on YouTube's part that should be reversed. But at that point, you, you know, you got to deal with what you got to deal with. And then you put out a diluted product uh, later on and it's shit. For some reason, channels like Matt Walsh's, Ben Shapiro's, Steven Crowder's even are allowed to stay up after saying some of the most reprehensible and horrid shit but left-wing channels are not held to the same standard. Usually, those left-wing channels are also smaller than those right-wing channels. Imagine my shock. A massively wealthy multinational corporation YouTube might be favorable to larger channels that make them more money. I know that's kind of a stretch for some people to suggest, but, you know, bear with me, all right? You have a little bit of an imagination. So we'll see what happens with this. You should definitely go watch the Matt Walsh video that I was talking about earlier, the anti-trans disinformation pipeline, as well as Jesse's video on YouTube's community violation system being broken, uh, and also subscribe to them, which I'm on my React channel, but wait, I should just, you know, sub on my React channel. On my main channel, I am subscribed, and you should be as well. And watch the watch her other videos. I also had uh, such an issue, and uh, luckily it worked out for the better for me after a week. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, I got a age restriction, meaning that my video was fully demonetized, and essentially it kills your video in the algorithm, meaning that you get no views anyway. Like I've had videos where I still think it's a stupid decision, but I got limited monetization, so it's literally better to release it without monetization. So you're essentially fully demonetized. Um, and you just take the L on the ad revenue, uh, which, you know, I need to pay bills. And at least you get the views, which is good for your other videos that don't have that problem. But this one is really bad. It's not good. And it doesn't look good on your YouTube channel as well. Uh, so it was a one hour, 16 minute video where I go over the quote unquote gender critical feminist work with misogynists or how they work with misogynists and Tucker Carlson's danger to trans people. And apparently it was worth being age restricted and demonetized. I go on to say, and I have, there is some, uh, explicit imagery here that I was wondering if it was the issue. So we'll avoid that, I guess. But it was that Canadian teacher, uh, where apparently there were some weird developments with that, but I don't, I haven't looked into it yet. Meanwhile, videos actively calling for violence against and spreading lies about trans people are allowed to stay up monetized and not age restricted like we were just going over. If this is about the Canadian teacher, I found two verified channels to also feature that imagery that haven't been restricted. My channel has consistently fallen within guidelines for full monetization and algorithm priority for years. The videos YouTube makes limited are always where I'm debunking violent right-wing anti-trans rhetoric. And like I've said before, it seems to be the case that YouTube's algorithm and then YouTube's human review can't really seem to tell the difference between content that is debunking hateful content and the hateful content content itself. It's really stupid. Now, I can understand why a bad algorithm making that decision might not be as effective or have a higher success rate, but after a human review, where a human being literally reviews it, you'd imagine that they would understand, oh, this person is actually debunking that content. They're not the ones saying the heinous stuff, they're debunking the heinous stuff, right? But apparently not all the time. So they actually rejected the appeal the first go around, uh, and it was some bullshit. Now, luckily for me, though, after a week of no monetization, they finally, you know, got rid of the age restriction, came to their senses, and allowed me to have a monetized video, but I already paid the price for their bad decision making. I didn't make any money for a week. After that, you're not making jack anyway, especially a channel of my size. I already make peanuts. So... It sucks, but at least there was a resolution to mine, and hopefully there will be a resolution to Vosh's where they get rid of these community guideline strikes because they are completely bullshit, get rid of the age restriction on the Jesse Gender video because it is completely bullshit, and yeah, that's about it. So these are examples of so-called big tech censorship that are targeting left-wing people, but the thing is that I think I've substantiated it fairly well, these are bad decisions that are being made. Not all censorship is made equal. Censoring people saying the N-word and advocating for violence against minorities, I think is a good thing and you should do it. But censoring people that are debunking the people saying those things, maybe not so much. It's kind of different. You're kind of doing educational and entertaining content and teaching people how to debunk these arguments themselves in the conversations they have in their real life and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're trying to do good for the world in that way these ostensibly progressive YouTube corporation that makes their logo rainbow in June, right? Somehow really okay with allowing violent lies about trans and queer people from the likes of Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, Steven Crowder, 
the rest of them. No issues at all. Fully monetized. No age restrictions. Really, you know, corporations, they're all on the side of the queer people. You know, how could you possibly be oppressed? The fact that conservatives don't call out the censorship, well, that's true, yeah, but I wouldn't really expect them to, so that's not really a thing that I'm going to be willing to bring up. Of course conservatives don't give a shit that left-wing uh, content creators are getting fraudulent strikes against their content that shouldn't be there. They're the ones who put them there, allegedly. Uh, it is known that right-wing people online are big fans of doing brigades and mass reporting videos simply to get them taken down by the algorithm, only then to the hopefully go on and be reinstituted by a human review, but still doing damage to the creator or, you know, keeping them down, which has happened. It's only censorship if the conservatives get censorship? Well, that's, what, that's literally what it is. It's censorship for thee, but not for me, because they are authoritarian. They want to be the rulers of everything and fuck everybody else. They don't want any rules to apply to them, and they want to force their set of rules on everybody else that isn't like them. Usually by, you know, race, ethnicity, religion, sexual identity, gender identity, etc. Right? So I'm just quickly adding this in here because new things have developed since the filming of what you're listening and watching or to right now. Uh, Jesse Gender recently actually got more information about why her particular four hour long video got taken down for the uh, so called sex and nudity policy. We've got some additional information, which is pretty illuminating. It's pretty interesting and surely doesn't show any kind of hypocrisy when it comes to literally anything about how the TOS is enforced on YouTube and how it might favor conservatives in some weird ways. She says, for full transparency, this is the joke that got me a community violation on YouTube, confirmed by YouTube, for quote-unquote unwanted sexualization, saying it breaks TOS, so few things a threat. So I'm not going to show you the clip because, uh, you know, I'm not trying to play with that. I have already been, like, attacked <laughs> by YouTube's dumb bullshit when it comes to a variety of things about, like, getting things limited that probably shouldn't be, that age restriction that luckily we got undone a week later, blah, 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 blah. So I'm not going to show you it, but essentially it's just Jesse Gender wearing the same outfit that she's wearing in the current video that's put up about Matt Walsh, the edited version that Jesse Gender put out, which I guess I should say she actually put out an edited version. We'll add a link to that in the description. You should watch it. It's four hours long. I cut it into two different you know, viewing sessions, but it's really good. I really think it's a good video that goes over a lot of this stuff. And it's in a format, one, that I don't use. And it's also using rhetoric that I don't use either because I'm more aggressive. I'm more mean when I talk about transphobes and all this kind of stuff. Whereas Jesse Gender seems to be trying to approach it in like the most civil, nice way as is possible, but while still delivering the same information and also a lot of information that I was not privy to before. It's really good. Highly recommend. Uh, and we need that kind of diversity in the delivery of this rhetoric, right? If you want to get rowdy and rambunctious and have me, you know, call people dumb fucks or whatever, then you watch me. If you want to not get a lot of that kind of vitriol, then you watch Jesse Gender or whoever else. It's all good. It's very nice. So let's go on. Oh, yeah. So essentially the clip was... Uh, Jesse Gender wearing the same outfit as she's wearing in the one that's currently up and not in any kind of trouble with YouTube. Uh, there is a mannequin that's also been in, I believe, previous videos without any issue that has Matt Walsh's, uh, a cutout of Matt Walsh's face, not his actual face, uh, though, you know, that would also be a bit interesting of a choice, uh, but a cutout of his face, like it was printed out, uh, not like his face was cut off, but rather it was printed, you see, and she's essentially saying, because she's referencing a previous joke she made about Matt Walsh, being like a, a third-rate Wolverine impersonator or something. She said, essentially, oh, we can... It's like, it's like a, oh, you just caught me in the act kind of thing. Like, oh, I didn't see you there kind of bit where she says like, oh, we can watch Wolverine, whatever, whatever, before we, you know, get a little... And then she goes on to address the camera and start talking about what she means to be talking about. And it's like 13 seconds long in a four-hour long video. And that is what got the four-hour long video taken down. And a warning given to Jesse Gender against her channel. So for those of you who don't know, it's three strikes and you're out, but you do get one warning sometimes. Uh, so that one warning meant that the next time any of this kind of stupid shit would happen, that's strike one. Strike two, strike three, you're out, meaning that your entire channel and thus your livelihood could be deleted. Now, if it was actually something that was a problem, like outright advocacy for violence, like the right wing does on YouTube a lot with no issue, spreading of medical misinformation that the right wing has actually had uh, some amount of trouble with when it comes to the TOS violations involved with that, but not a lot. 
Uh, not enough, because they still do it. Uh, I don't know, outright lies and stochastic terroristic acts on their programs. A lot of conservatives don't get in trouble for that either. But if you make a 13 second long stinky little joke in the context of a four hour long video, you're liable to get a warning that, you know, three more of those so-called violations, you get yoinked. I don't know, man. Seems a bit silly to me. She goes on to say, I only got the confirmation that this was the sole issue with my video after my first appeal was denied. My YouTube representative managed to get a second appeal through, which was also denied. Wow, super cool by YouTube to really be in touch with their creators and care a lot about their well-being uh, and helping them through the process of learning how not to make violations in the future of their TOS which would be better for literally everybody if we knew what the hell the problem was so that we could just not do the thing that was the problem, which makes it easier for us and also for YouTube. My Nebula representative, for those of you who don't know, Nebula is an alternative streaming service that a lot of left-wing content creators use to avoid fuckery with YouTube. Nebula representative had a meeting to confirm what the issue was. Second, I don't believe this violates TOS, and obviously I don't either. It's obviously a joke in a cartoon version of Matt that is only silly because of how cartoonish it is. It's only funny because it's a mannequin, not actually Matt. Also, gross if it was. True. Didn't actually cut Matt's face off and staple it to a mannequin in this video. Uh, to the dismay of some, I imagine. This falls within artistic and comedic intent, which was also the intent of what I just said and, and not anything else. I was trying to be funny. Third, even if you think this breaks YouTube's TOS, why do I get hit with this when Matt Walsh and many other anti-trans creators get to sexualize trans people unimpeded? See just some of the videos on YouTube, so we got a bunch of shit. Uh, the transgender epidemic, why so many young girls are transitioned, my brother become transgender, dad dies inside when he meets, and these are not even like the best examples. These are just examples. This anti-trans content often calls trans people a fetish, rumors, a political ideology, and that we, and trans-affirming doctors, quote-unquote, mutilate children which are knowing lies, or they're too stupid to know that they're lying, because this doesn't happen. These are all transphobic and false narratives used to scapegoat and vilify trans people. It is telling to me that my video gets hit with a community violation while anti-trans content continues to stay up without impediment, despite it clearly sexualizing trans people, individuals, and our community, being intentional disinformation and often qualifying as hate speech. And I've been talking about this for a long time, and the Jesse Gender, uh, this whole scenario with Jesse Gender is a very clear example of it. A 13 second long stupid joke in the context of a four hour long epic on YouTube is enough to get the entire video pulled and a warning against your account. But Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, Steven Crowder can literally go on their platforms, advocate violence against trans people, overtly sexualize trans people, and often minors, and they seem to be still up, fully monetized, no problem at all, and also selling ads to YouTube. Somehow, I, it just doesn't seem like conservatives have that tough of a time on YouTube, at least when it comes to the issue of trans liberation and trans rights. They can talk shit on trans people, advocate violence against trans people, blatantly lie about trans people till the cows come home, and it's no issue. Because trans people are currently the tip of the spear. Trans people are currently the one minority group that the fucking right wing has left that they can openly talk about in this way without any kind of major ramifications in this cancel culture we live in, right? I've talked about this before with the right wing civil rights ladder dilemma, the little, you know, image I developed for that, where because of a variety of civil rights fights that, you know, people have literally bled and died to achieve the gains of, it is now in society for a lot of right wingers, not as easy for them to do what they would want to do and just be outwardly racist to black people, let's say, even though they still do it through dog whistles, be outwardly homophobic to gay people, even though they still do it through dog whistles and also sometimes without. They still get monetized, they don't get their videos pulled, they don't get community guidelines strikes and they're chilling. And the reason for this is because trans people are now some of the most marginalized people given those positive civil rights gains. And that's not even, those gains aren't even solid, as we can see with Roe v. Wade being overturned when it comes to the marginalized status of women and people who can give birth. The precedent set for that to also potentially, as Justice Clarence Thomas has talked about, potentially undo the Supreme Court decision that legalized gay marriage. So those aren't even solid gains, but that's too much for the right wing. But it's gotten to the point where trans people, you know, you can make a transphobic Netflix special and then get four more after, right? 
YouTube also has a clear vested financial interest in allowing transphobia to run wild on their platform. The Daily Wire spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and had money to promote their transphobic What is a Woman film. True. Daily Wire, PragerU, Fox News, and more spend thousands to spread transphobic ads on YouTube, even on trans supportive content. So she says, I get followers every day saying they get these ads on my content. I do as well, right? There are always people in my comments saying, oh, I got a Matt Walsh ad on this content. I can't believe it. Like it's a video about affirming trans rights and the need for trans liberation. I'm getting a, a Matt Walsh ad. I'm getting a Ben Shapiro ad. What is the point of this? And that's, that's literally targeted. Like they want that to be the case. They want to put their ads on pro-trans content, obviously because why wouldn't they, right? It's a, a funny uh, lay troll, of course. So trying to block it is apparently, I didn't even know you had tools to block it only on your channel. Uh, I didn't even know that was possible, but you as a consumer can also, there's usually like a little info, like an I or an info button or something that you can click and it, you can like select something that says, stop showing me this ad or something like that. Your results may vary. I feel like I've heard stories of people where they've done that and they still get similar stuff. But I don't actually know, I've never done it myself. Uh, but apparently you can, so look into that if that's a thing that bothers you, because obviously it would, especially if you're one of those marginalized groups. YouTube is also more likely to recommend conservative, which is increasingly more focused solely on anti-trans content, and the algorithm, even if you tell it not to. For example, my followers will often get anti-trans videos recommended after watching my videos. And there's actually been a lot of interesting uh, articles written on that idea conservatives are get a massive boost in the algorithm because the content that they post is vitriolic it's hateful it's aggressive and it's offensive which drives engagement even if you want to look at this as a like a clearly like apolitical or just how the algorithm works or whatever kind of way it's more hateful so it's going to get more engagement of people either agreeing or shitting on it and that's going to drive its progress through the algorithm but even then there was that old uh, article of uh, twitter apparently some time ago developed a tool that was meant to automatically like take down neo-nazis and like white supremacists and stuff that were posting similar content on their platform but they couldn't use it because it was flagging too many elected representatives in the republican party uh if i can find that is it this one yeah, from business, the communist business insider. Twitter reportedly won't use an algorithm to crack down on white supremacists because some GOP politicians could end up getting barred too. This was posted to April 25th, 2019. Clearly, even though right-wingers bitch and moan all the time on the platform like the little piss babies they are about the unfair treatment that they get by big tech, uh, it seems like they're doing fine. In fact, it seems like they're getting a lot of help. Imagine my shock that these multinational corporations that make boatloads of money like Meta and Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, they're also like pro-capitalist and are more amicable to the opinions of fascists and Nazis because at least those people uphold capitalism until it devolves further into, you know, the fascism that they would want. Capitalists historically have not really been big fans of leftists, anti-capitalists. Shockingly, I know. I know that's kind of a a hard pill to swallow for some people. Seems like there's a little bit more going on here. Now it's possible that it's just the algorithm being weird and blah, 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 blah. Maybe there isn't an actual political bias, uh, but I feel like that would be a bit silly and also easily rectified. And we don't seem to be getting that much progress on that front either. I think it's important that YouTube answers for and gives a reason to why they allow this content on their site despite it breaking TOS. I, it's the money, Lebowski. That's literally it. It's literally just the money. Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, their channels get a lot of views and they make YouTube a lot of money. Jesse Gender's videos also get a lot of views, but she doesn't make them nearly as much money because she doesn't upload at the same frequency because her content is uh, apparently <laughs> more likely to get struck in stupid ways. That's simply it. At, at the bare bones of it. There could be additional political bullshit going on there, but it's the money. That's why YouTube and any uh, any firm really is going to be willing to sell minorities down the river if it means they can make more money. Much the same way that they're willing to pander to minorities by making their profile icons rainbows for the month of June to make more money by seeming more woke even though they actually aren't in practice, right? That's it. Very simple. There's one more thing I wanted to say. Oh, and also when it comes to the whole big tech thing, I've said this before, but big, 
But whenever a right winger like, uh, like Ted Cruz or Josh Hawley or whoever else, Tucker Carlson, rails against big tech, it's literally just a way for them to pretend to to cosplay as populists. They don't actually care about it. They don't care that, you know, they care that their buddies got banned on Twitter for saying the N-word or advocating violence against a minority group or something. Uh, but they want to be the ones who choose who gets banned. That's it. They want to be the leaders of these big tech corporations because they're not. That's why they're mad at them. They want to be able to have the kind of control over the narrative that a lot of these social media companies have through their policies, through their TOS and in the enforcement of it. Uh, but they're currently not in the driver's seat for that. They also do just get helped by it sometimes too as well though. So that's why they're mad. Anything else is bullshit because they are capitalists. Very clearly they should be okay with big tech being able to exist. So as far as I'm aware, this is the update to the Jesse Gender situation. However, when it comes to the Vouch situation that we talked about earlier or will talk about, uh, depending on when this gets in the video, there's not been anything there. YouTube actually doubled down on the decision to keep the community guideline strikes on both the Vosh Pit and the main Vosh channel. So I was incorrect. I thought it was I was under the impression that the main Vosh channel got two community guideline strikes. It turns out the main channel and his second channel, the Vosh Pit, each of those got one community guideline strike, which is certainly not as bad because that would mean that two more and you're out on both channels rather than one more and you're out on the main one, uh, which is significantly scarier. So at least there's that. They doubled down on it. It was apparently what got in trouble on both channels was him laughing at, debunking, uh, shitting on, and making fun of the right-wing candidate in some race. It was a Republican who essentially advocated violence against his political opposition in the Republican Party. Because, you know, in the thread of YouTube always, for some reason, even with their human review, confusing the debunking of hate speech to the actual publishing and support of hate speech, here it is happening again. They doubled down on it, Team YouTube did on Twitter, uh, and that's very cringe. It's really stupid as well. And hopefully those could get undone at some point. They come off, I think, after like six months or something. So... You just have to chill out for a little bit. It's a bit cringe, if you ask me. Uh, and then when it comes to me, I so that age restriction for me got undone after a week, and it still fucked me over. Uh, but this is not as relevant. But the most recent video, the most recent video we put out, is ADHD Real The Jubilee Panel Teaches Us How to Cope. This one actually got hit by a copyright claim from, I believe, some group that works with Jubilee. I talked to Vouch about it, and apparently they sometimes do that. It was a one-minute clip where I wasn't saying much. I did pause it and say something really quickly, but I wasn't saying much, and apparently I got a copyright claim. Uh, and it was for a minute in the broader context of a 40-minute video. And they stripped all of my income from it and gave it all to Jubilee, or whoever it is that claimed it. Like, what the fuck? On YouTube, you are literally guilty until proven innocent. If you get a copyright claim, all of the revenue that you get until you can potentially get it reversed is the money that goes to the copyright holder. You don't get reimbursed. If they eventually understand that they made a mistake and reverse that decision, tough luck. You lost money, which is really bad for small creators like myself. It's also the same that if the, uh, if the bot flags your video for limited and then the human review could take like up to seven business days, they say, or so for them to review it. Usually they're relatively quick with it, but you still miss a lot of potential revenue in that time. You don't get reimbursed for that either. Tough luck. Them's the breaks. And it's a bullshit. Like imagine going to your job and you get wrongfully fired for a week you're out of a job and then eventually, luckily at least for you, the decision to terminate you gets reversed and you're allowed to come back to work and then they don't reimburse you for the week's worth of pay that you lost because of their mistake. That would be ridiculous. That's like a, a labor rights fight right there. Uh, but on YouTube, because we're independent contractors and uh, independent contractors are the serfs of the population that get no labor representation and get exploited the worst, get fucked, I guess. That's the message from YouTube. It's pretty cringe. Uh, so I cut out using YouTube's tools the minute of so-called offending material. Now, obviously, like I say, this is different because the copyright claim is not related to like YouTube's moderation. That's just, you know, just some algorithm shit from the claimer, like false striking me. But I still like YouTube doesn't do anything for you if that happens is what I'm complaining about. I use their tools to cut out the offending material, quote unquote, and it's still fucked. Oh, content found during another. Oh, okay, what is this cope? Another okay, minute long chat. clip on the Jubilee panel. Okay. Maybe I'm just too far gone. Maybe I don't believe in myself enough. 
Good for them. I hope not. <laughs> I'm talking for like half the yeah, minute. I think if you had asked me two or three years ago, I would have been like strong. And I think what's great about like getting those things and I do this why or what I've gone. I, I didn't blame it on. So I guess I guess we just, it, you know, next time I'm going to contest this, obviously. But I guess next time we just have to make sure to. Yeah, they just, it, it seems like, yeah, they're just not going to stop with the claims. It's just going to keep getting claimed until the video is like a minute long. So I guess in the future, we just never let a minute long amount of audio from what I'm very clearly transforming to be shown. Like, look at this stupid bullshit. Are you ready? Look at this. Are you ready? The Jubilee video I reacted to was the do all people with ADHD think the same. That video is 12 minutes and 41 seconds long. My video reacting to it is 38 minutes and 59 seconds long. Literally more than double the runtime of the original video. And in that time that we're not watching the 12 minutes and 41 seconds of runtime of the original video, I am talking, delivering my own commentary, and transforming the content. Literally making transformative content that very clearly falls within the realm of that definition. But they get all my money. Yo, know, because the, the small mom and pop 7.53 million sub channel has to steal the money of the transformative content made by the 35.9 thousand subscriber channel. Very cool. So when talking about this, obviously the higher ups at YouTube are to share a lot of this blame because that's literally the position that they're in. Uh, however, I try not to talk so much shit on the actual, like, human reviewers. Because, like I say, they, they probably aren't getting paid enough. Uh, YouTube is probably not hiring enough people. So that's not really where I like to focus my anger. I'm trying to focus my anger more at the moderation policies that YouTube has and the way that they enforce them. And oftentimes, when it comes to right-wingers, the way that they don't enforce them, right? I guess I've covered, essentially, all of it. I don't even know where we're at at this point with this all right, we'll just cut it there then. Damn, I hate leaving the segment on that note. Suck. I feel like I said what I needed to say. Goodbye. This video is kind of called for the fifth time, the last one being all the way back in May, none other than the totally not cheating or gaming the system in any capacity, Iron Mage. Thanks so much for literally entering into, I'm pretty sure, every single one of these. And congrats on your fifth win. Very pog. If you'd like to be the next Connor Collard, all you gotta do is follow me on Twitter, at ConnorCC, retweet my video links when they go live. Remember to subscribe to the channel, put all notifications on when you hit the bell, leave a like if you'd like, comment something down below about how conservatism is cringe, and frankly, YouTube should be pumping up as many left-wing creators as possible, uh, and have a great day.